the one thing you gotta change is everything. Since the first drink I took, like, I was always that guy. I didn't understand what just having, like, getting buzzed was. Like, no, I'm, like, going all the way. Deep down, I knew I had a problem, like, early on. But I never wanted to admit it. Ooh. You know what today is. Do you know where you were three years ago today, April 11th? Out of, you were, it was out a of month. rehab, yeah, yeah, yeah. Three years well, ago, I think about that. today. Yeah. And now look at you, now you're sitting in the UFC facility about to, to work out and telling a story. Three years, does it feel like a long time ago? <laughs> I'm going into year five already in the NFL, which is like, I don't know how to describe it to people. Like it feels almost like the days are super long, but the time just flies by. So, yeah, honestly, it's it's insane. I can't believe it's already been three years. I remember the first, like, March 11th when I went in there. Every day seemed like the longest day ever. Yeah. Like, I had no phone. I couldn't, like, everything was just completely different and slowed down. And when I was leaving, I was like, I did my 30 days, I'm going back home, screw this, like I'm ready yeah. to get home. They were like, no, like you're going to sober living, you're gonna stay there till training camp. Putting yourself in a rehab alone is the hardest part, admitting you got a problem, but I wasn't ready. I think it was two and a half months I ended up staying there. You know, looking back on it, like that was something I truly needed because I wasn't ready to go back to Vegas after 30 days. Like I just left that house and I was blacked out the last time I was there. Max, with two X's, Crosby, was born August 22, 1997, to parents Brian and Vera in Colleyville, Texas, a Dallas suburb. The day you're born, yeah. you were 11 pounds, nine ounces? Yeah, I was a big boy. A big boy. A big boy, yeah. <laughs> Vera, Vera, yeah. Did, she had to do some work, and now having <laughs> yes. a child of your own and seeing yeah. what Rachel went through, can oh you God. can appreciate Vera <laughs> even more for 1, what happened. One thousand percent. My mom is a, she's a warrior. She for sure so. is. For sure, yeah. For me, like, I was a middle child, you know, insecure, redheaded kid. Like, I didn't have the girls. I didn't have any of that. Like, and my brother was, like, the man. He was a pretty boy, got all the girls. Like, so in my head, I was always, like, I'm trying to be like him. Like, they don't want me. But, like, it was always, like, a constant, like, internal battle. I never expressed it to him. But, like, yeah. I had that jealousy, and I wanted that life. And, like, I just wasn't happy as a human being. Like, I just was constantly just self-sabotaging and just making it worse and worse and worse and trying to drink away my feelings and then repeating and doing the when same. When did you start drinking? Um, I started in high school. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's just kind of... And you loved it, right, when you started? Oh, immediately. I was like, yeah. you know, for me, the drinking was like kind of like that, you know, that pivot to where I could, you know, open you up. And, yeah, and... give me the confidence. And, you know, and then football started happening and I started, you know, growing a little bit and became a good football player. So it kind of just like... It worked hand in hand because I got confident that I'm drinking out and I'm confident yeah, and, and drinking. And just and like, yeah. yeah, so it was just like a bad cycle, but that's kind of how it started. Eastern Michigan was the only scholarship offer Crosby received, but he made the most of it, earning first team All Mac in both 2017 and 2018. In college, you stopped drinking for what? Was it nine months? After yeah. you, because you got a DUI. Yep, I got a DUI. In college, and yep. did you think in that moment, like, I'm gonna lose this all if I don't stop? Like, what made you stop, and, and why did you go back in that moment? Yeah, I give a lot of credit to my head coach, Chris Creighton. He was the one that, like, started that. He's like, if you drink at any point, like, you get the first game, you could play the second game, whatever, but if it's week seven and I find out you're drinking, mm -hmm. you're suspended that next game, I don't care. And in my head, like, yeah. I already made it up. I'm leaving early, I'm going to the league. At that time, like, I was getting sober for basically, obviously selfishly for my career because I knew like what I, my vision was, but like at the same time, I was just staying sober to get through this football season. 2019, it's the NFL draft. Take me through that day, sort of the emotions and, and storyline there when you look back on that. That was extremely stressful. I had teams, you know, mention to me, you know, being a top 100 pick. And so I'm waiting day two and I don't get drafted. And I'm sitting there with my whole family, all my friends, Rachel, like I was just sick to my stomach and I just walked out of the party. I'm pissed, I'm like sick because going into day three, you don't know what the hell is gonna happen. 
Hello? Who is this? I knew the Raiders had two picks. They had 106 and 109. I just, for some reason, like, it's the same thing. Like, things happen for a reason. Like, it just makes too much sense. I'm meant to be a Raider. I am, Coach, I promise. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. In his first year, Crosby had 10 sacks and finished second to Nick Bosa for Defensive Rookie of the Year. You got a great rookie season. Yeah. And then what's the reason why you allowed yourself to sort of revert back to, dare I say, old ways? After my rookie year, that was the first time like in my life where it's like, all right, I got money for the first time. You got an off season. I got an off season. I don't have to be anywhere for this no amount class. of time. Yeah. No class, nothing. Like, And it was the worst thing for me at that time. And I just went on a spiral, <laughs> mm -hmm. literally for like three months straight. It was bad, so. Does it trip you out a little bit to think like, I was able to even get here and operate at this high level when I wasn't sober, and now mm -hmm. what you can do in sobriety? That was the one thing I felt like was holding me back. That first year of sobriety was so hard, and I went through so much mentally. Following the 2020 season, Crosby had surgery on a torn labrum and broken hand, injuries he played with most of the year. I got my surgery. We went back to Vegas, and like literally everything changed. I sat with a nutritionist, got with the strength staff, got with everybody. I'm like, listen, I'm not trying to be a middle of the road guy or a good story. Oh, he got sober in the league, whatever. I'm like, I'm trying to be the best. I'm gonna do everything I can to make it happen. In these past two years, like, literally went from like a middle of the road guy to an all pro, and I still know I got room to grow. Yeah, it's I'm crazy. such a loser. I have chills right now yeah, thinking about like, <laughs> yeah, crazy. because I like that winning mentality yeah. and doing whatever it takes to win. And yeah. that's why you're sitting here. And it's also why the Raiders rewarded you. Initial here. On the second anniversary of his sobriety, the Raiders gave Crosby a new contract worth 53 million in guarantees. I appreciate you guys. Happy days. Yes, sir. You got it, buddy. Congrats. Yes, sir. Congrats. In 2022, Crosby had his best year yet. He led the league in tackles for loss with 22 and recorded a career high 12 and a half sacks. People always say something about me. You know, he's just a try hard, he plays hard, that's what he does. And then all of a sudden I start getting more respect, but there's always gonna be doubters. And the more love you get, the more hate you get. The way I approach life is I don't give a damn what anybody says. I'm gonna attack it head on and see where I land. How I'm does this excited. help you? Um, honestly, so last year, I, I, to add into my training, I started doing boxing every week. We do like an hour and a half on my off days. Yeah. I've always been a huge fan. I've always wanted to fight. Like, I grew up fighting, so, mm -hmm. like, not in, you know, in a gym or anything like that, but I always was interested in it. So I started boxing, and it's just been a part of my, you know, training, so. This be your other career? We'll see. You never know. <laughs> I know you're waiting for that championship, as, as any football player is, and, and hoisting that Lombardi, but you got, a, you got a pretty good trophy on your case right now in sobriety, and congratulations Absolutely. that I would, I would venture to, to say is even harder to get to. So thank you for sharing your story. Thank you so much. This is a good one. It. I feel like we're only in chapter five. I can't <laughs> wait to keep reading. This is a lot more. Because there's a lot sure. more.